And a final poem, the Sunday phone call. Drab December, sleet falling, dogs loosely fisted in torpor, horses nose down in hay. It's the hour years ago I used to call my parents, or they'd call me. The phone rings, idly, empty of expectation, I answer. It's my father's voice. Pop, I say, you're dead. Don't you remember that final heart attack, Dallas, just before Kennedy was shot? Time means nothing here, kiddo. He's jolly expansive. You can wait eons for an open line. <laughs> Time gets used up, but comes back, you know, like ping pong. Ping pong, the table in the attic, my father, shirt sleeves rolled, the wet stub of a burnt out cigarette stuck to his lower lip as he murdered each one of my three older brothers and me yearning under the eaves, waiting for my turn. You sound just like yourself, I say. I am myself, goddammit. Anyway, what's this about an accident? How did you hear about it? I read it somewhere, broke your neck, etc. He says this vaguely, his shorthand way of keeping feelings at bay. You mean you read my memoir? Did you know you're in it? Didn't read that part. No need to stir things up. Now I'm indignant, but I almost died. Didn't I tell you never buy land on a hill? It's worthless. What's an educated dame like you doing messing with horses? Messing with horses is for punks. Then a little softer. I see you two have put a lot of work into that hunk of real estate. Thanks. Thanks for even noticing. We love it here. We'll never sell. Like hell you won't, you will. Pop, I say, tearing up. Let's not fight for once. My only papa... When do I get to see you? A long pause, then coughing his cigarette cough. Pupshin, he says, I may be dead, but I'm not clairvoyant. Behave yourself. The line clicks off. Thank you very much.